Benga Online presents highlights from the story of Kenya's popular music in the 70-year period between the end of the Second World War and 2016. The series draws its inspiration from the definitive book Shades of Benga by Ketebul Music. Welcome to Shades of Benga web series. Tonight, we'll be discussing hip-hop and urban musical culture in Kenya. To play us in is Jemedari, performing Tafsiri He, originally by Kalama Shaka. My name is Alo Obala. Yo, Kalama Shaka in the building. Yo, Tal City, he, Maisha Kuleti, the Mazidi, Naliana Kit to me at MIC. Tough city, he, Nikawa to Cochini, Badu to Natuma Ini, Sikiza Kwamakini. Tough city, he, Maisha Kuleti, the Mazidi, Naliana Kit to me at MIC. Tough city, he, Nikawa to Cochini, Badu to Natuma Ini, Sikiza Kwamakini. Tough city, Mimi in a star, he lived in Penafasi, it to me a Swahili, Mimi was a Zuru Killer Nation, Nikitangaza Kua. Africa kuna matata basi mashaka wadogo kwa wakubwa wote tunapata kuna kichwa wala mkia hapa akina oboho kauzi sasa wako wera wapi yo correct na jumbo ni ya villa ili shika microphone kila siku ili niwe kama puff daddy ama yule basta hakuna tumaini nadhani nitakuwa ka omondi ama rasta ya niwasha nikiweka akilini sasa nazuru ruwa raka nipati angalau chupa kada za taska ili nisahau hizi tabu zangu tabu zangu ah mungu wangu zita isha lini kila siku mimi ninawaza ninaka nijita remshe siku zita chini nipala Sasa niko hapa na Josiah nina wapati ya verses Shina bibilia Maisha kule dini mazini na liene kitu mia MIC Tough Siri he Ika watu kuchini bado tunatumaini Sikiza kwa makini Tough Siri he Maisha kule dini mazini na liene kitu mia MIC Tough Siri he Ika watu kuchini bado tunatumaini Sikiza kwa makini Niku eleze Vile kule di kama Wycliffe na Fonte See who struggle Who stay alive Venye si u survive 95 Tuli anza kuroga ili tupate zamboga Sio juju kukuroga ni mziki tukuroga ili geto tuweze doka Biga vijana wasoka wa timu ya maisa kabisa Na geto tutatoka bila biga watu tisa Tuma ini siku moja chapa utaingiza Utakuwa ukitebea bila kulizwa Kijana unenda wapi utakuwa ndani ya sido Ukishia kula hevi na joko uwakati ni kumu kuwamini Ama unashido utafika hukulini Kwanzia utotoni shida Umekuwa kule chini, umaskini, umekuwa ni rafiki Lazima utana wiri Maisha kule dini, mazini, nalia tukitumia MIC Tafsiri hii, inga watuko chini, bado tunatumaini Sikiza kwa makini, tafsiri hii Maisha kule dini, mazini, nalia nikitumia MIC Tafsiri hii, inga watuko chini, bado tunatumaini Au siyo, mabeste kule keto wali nita Al Pacino Jaro zangu, na squad ya watu kumina mbili kama Jesus Nilita mani jaro za credit card na visa Constantly kwenye kona, na kumbuka niki ona Yule mze akishikwa ko Bala, bala, na shidwa, nikimbili ya nani Jambazi hapana, polisi hapana Watani piga pingu hata bila sababu Maisha ni makumu, nilikata elimu Mama yangu alidhani mimi ni wazimu Siku lose hope, nikaanza kudrop lyrics Moja kwa moja pata heshima kama pop Smile, siku zote, piga duru Sababu ni mepata lita mbili za kukuru Tafsiri sisiri, wengi toka keto wanawiri Maisha kule dini, mazini, lalile kitu mia MIC Tafsiri hii, nika watu kuchini, wado tunatumaini Sikiza kwa makini Tafsiri hii, maisha kule dini, mazini, lalile kitu mia MIC Tafsiri hii, nika watu kuchini, wado tunatumaini Sikiza, kiwa alionzi Wewe tafsiri, ukiwa South B Wewe tafsiri, ukiwa kule D Wewe tafsiri, wewe tafsiri, wewe tafsiri Keto zote Kenya, 
wewe tafsiri ukiwa hata bunge wewe tafsiri ukiwa hapa pia wewe tafsiri wewe tafsiri wewe tafsiri tafsiri hii maisha kule dini mazi na lena kitu mia mic tafsiri hii ikawa tu kuchini bado tunatumia sikiza Tonight we are privileged to have a group of panelists that are seasoned in the genre of hip-hop in Kenya. To start us off is Buddha Blaze. Buddha Blaze is a creative entrepreneur involved in the entertainment management scene. His mission is shaping the artistic business narrative to get brands to partner with creatives in achieving their goals. He has been involved in projects such as WAPI, Cox Studio, and Blaze TV. He is currently on the team that has just launched the Safaricom digital platform, Base. Kari Buda. Thank you for having me. Next on our panel is Fundi Frank. Fundi Frank is credited with pioneering Kiswahili rap in Kenya. He celebrates a lustrous music career with major collaborations. Today he is termed as one of Kenya's top tier fashion designers, having dressed personalities both locally and internationally. Kari Bu Fundi Frank. Asante sana. Our final panelist is Ngala Chome. Ngala Chome is a writer and historian. He's also a regular commentator on Kenya's social, cultural, and political issues. His work examines the modern history of Kenyan coast and has been published in journals such as The Elephant and Kwani. Ngala is currently a PhD candidate at Durham University and editor at Sahifa. Thank you. Welcome, Ngala. Okay, so we'll just get the ball rolling with Ngala. Ngala, could you just give us a history of hip hop? Yeah, um, so, Thank you again for having me. But I, I, think, I think to start us off, I think it's important, uh, first and foremost, to appreciate that hip hop is a music genre that originated from, 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 from the United States, in particular in New York, and in particular in the, in the, in the borough called the Bronx. Um, um, and, and you're talking about the years of the 70s, 80s, a uh, very, very crucial time also in American history in particular. Um, 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 it's important to appreciate that that uh, that time in in the 70s, New York uh, was undergoing a lot of a lot of uh, uh, troubles, uh, 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 social uh, uh, troubles, um, um, a lot of inequality. I think I think for me, I always uh, mention the movie if if you watch it, the the Joker, and how it depicts New York at that time. That's 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 how rough New York was at that time. And uh, and um, uh, Melly Mel, one of the members of uh, one of the first hip hop bands. Uh, Grand, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five actually described uh, the Bronx at that time as, as a war zone. Yeah. Um, uh, so what you have is that on one side you had a very you had the images of disco um, um, that were played, you know, kind of in very very expensive clubs. Uh, 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 you know, cocaine was 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 the favorite drug at that time of you know kind of rich people. And then on the other side you had these kids, black kids in poor neighborhoods, who were also trying to have a good time. Um, um, they were kicked out of this kind of uh, flashy, flashy discos. And, and um, uh, uh, one kid in particular, his name uh, uh, known today as DJ Cool Herc, who actually has roots in Jamaica, um, uh, went and picked some skills from, from sort of like the dancehall scene that was emerging in Jamaica and came to New York, uh, uh, Sedgwick Avenue. Uh, uh, in fact, is, is the most famous address, I think, in hip-hop, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, where he would do these block parties. And, and, and the greatest invention or his contribution was to, was to just play the, the break beat uh, a part of, of, a, of, a, of a funk song. So funk music is very crucial to understanding hip hop and, uh, uh, because for the first time uh, from around 1968, when James Brown played a song called Cold Sweat, which is credited as the first funk song, uh, uh, is, was to was to pick the what, what is called the rhythm of the one, right? Uh, uh, which is basically boom, cha, 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 boom, cha, 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 cha. That's the rhythm of the one. And so what DJ Kulhak was doing is that he was speaking that part where the musician is not singing of of a funk song. So just and then he would mix that the same part from another song. So it'd be one long kind of dancing the rhythm, right? And you create this rhythmic atmosphere where kids would start dancing. Now, those kids who started dancing were called b-boys, you know, because they were dancing to the break part of the beat. And this went on and on. People picked it up, you know, from DJ Cool Herc, you had, you know, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flash also came in the, in, the, in the late 70s. 
Um, uh, it was about 10 years before, actually, people started rapping uh, uh, to that breakbeat, right? Um, 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 and then, of course, uh, just not to, to, to there's a lot of detail there, but, but I think you also have to credit Sylvia Robinson. So Sylvia Robinson um, is coming out of the soul funk era. Uh, she's broke. Uh, her career, you know, has gone down the drain. And, and, and she signs this group she calls Sugar Hill, uh, uh, I think 79, 1980. And, and she's trying to tap into this culture of, of, of block parties in New York. What, she, what, what she's realizing is that they're not recording their music. They're recording mixtapes um, uh, and, and, and you know, distributing them in New York. But no one was actually, not actually thought of this as, as sort of like music, music genre. But she did. Um, uh, and therefore, they went and recorded the first hip-hop song. Uh, uh, by, by, by Sugar Hill Gang, I, I remember, I, rem I don't remember the title, uh, I don't know, <laughs> my, my colleagues here will help me. Um, uh, the hip, the hop, the hip, the hip to the hip, hip, hop. That's, that's the first, you know, recorded. Rapper's song. Delight. Rapper's, Rapper's Delight. Delight, thank you, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and then the rest after that uh, uh, is history, but we will, we will talk about that. Fundi Frank, hip hop came to Kenya and you are known as the pioneer of Swahili rap when it comes to Kenya. So could you just set for us the scene about the emergence of hip-hop in Kenya? Yeah, okay. What happened is that uh, as things were happening in, in America, the culture in the world was also changing and we were getting exports from America. So back then I was in Mombasa and Mombasa is where now the culture was coming in fast because of back in the days we used to have the American ships you know, the, the aircraft carriers. They'd come and dock in Mombasa offshore and then had like smaller ships coming into Mombasa. So you'd have like maybe at one go about 5,000 or 8,000 crew from the ships, you know, Americans getting into the streets of Mombasa. So what happened is they, they influenced culture because, uh, because of the timing we had like, you know, things were going on. They had clubs that to open like during the afternoon to accommodate them and all that. But essentially, they, they, what they, they, they did is that uh, they used to come and buy stuff, especially curios, you know, and, you know, I forget, artifacts. Super so the, the people who sold curios are the tasks, yeah. made a lot of money from them because they used to come from the port, they go to the curios and all that. Now, in the process of that, uh, they also exchange stuff. You know, the way it happens when someone comes from abroad, it reaches a time he doesn't have any more money, so they exchange. So as they exchange stuff, so they left shoes, T-shirts, tapes. So, and most of them were very big, by the way. The shoes were very big, size 13, size 14, but things like T-shirts, tapes. Yeah, so they left tapes. So they left that culture. So if you went to those guys, you'd get like original tapes of Fat Boys, Run DMC, you know. And at the same time, uh, we could also get magazines from abroad that, uh, that, that talked about hip hop those days, right on, word up, you know, and later the source. Now we could merge both and then it became easy for these people to be loved because, uh, they, they were blacks. Most of them were blacks. And, you know, so the Jamaican music was also big. And then the, the, the American rap, uh, was big. And people could see them like in uh, on the magazines, and then we had tapes as well. Once in a while, you could get smuggled tapes from from abroad. You know the way we have programs here that have like music. We didn't have them then, there, so we had tapes that people could smuggle. And even the Americans left some of them, so people could go somewhere to watch the videotapes, you know, of rap and all that. So people liked that culture because they're they're done by just people like us, you know, and then. It's, we realize that it's also easy because it, it, it goes with the culture, you know, like the, the African culture, the poetry, the mashairi, it's the same thing. It's just like the four part bit that Ngala was talking about. So it's just, there's something called mashairi a wimbo, which is just the same. It's just poetry, but now put it in, put it in a singing form. So it's just people talking wise words, witty words. So that's how it, it was incorporated into like Kenya. Struck a chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh. So it struck a chord. So people started now like rapping. Then we had things like Breakdance One, the, the movie came, which had a lot of, you know, the hip hop culture, the breakdance, the, the singing, the b-boying, everything. It was all there. It was like about the hip hop culture. So now that culture was fully embraced. So now that's how some of us now started like 
rapping, rapping, rapping. So one time he went to a jam session club called Tiffany's. And uh, we had like a jam session and we, we talked to, to the owners. We said, like, we, we have a show because it was about dancing. We had a bit of dancers, but we said we also do something different, you know, rap, like a variety show. And then we rapped. People used to rap. Then one time we rapped in Swahili. Like, we can do this in Swahili. So we rapped in Swahili and people were like, what? It can be done? You know, it's shocked. Like, because they could hear the words. And they were really excited. So then after that, we realized, okay, there's something here. So we went to some guys to record a tape. There's a DJ called DJ Cairo, who's now based in the UK. Uh, he gave us a chance to record in his club instrumentals. We used to have instrumentals. There were very few instrumentals. So we would go during the day when he was practicing, and they would record us live on tape. So he, he'd put for us, like, uh, tapes you know, like instrumentals. There was an instrumental called 45 King with the same beat. So that, and then we had a bit of Jamaican beats, that instrumentals. So he'd play and then we'd rap. So he'd record us on a tape. You know, those days of, we had like the chrome tapes were now like the original tapes. So he'd press and then we'd rap. And uh, so we rapped, you know, like a whole a whole set, you know, just like live. So it press and we drop. If it's messed, we start again. You know, it's not like the modern studios where you can edit and stop. No, you, you do it and that's it. So we did that, we did a tape and we gave it to some guy who was selling tapes at uh, Mwembe Tayari. And the bus he, station? Yeah, the bus okay. station, yeah, the main station in Mombasa. And he, he used to sell tapes, you know, that old tape. So he put in the rap yeah, just to try and he found people milling around because, you know, we were, we were rapping in Swahili and we were rapping things they could understand. So even like older people would come and buy. And so he was so excited. He told us, you guys, that tape, man, people were just packed like crazy, man. Can you do another one? So we, we kept on going back to do this stuff. And what we realized is that the older generation, some of them didn't even know that this is hip hop. But some would say, ah, they're singing like Shaba Ranks or singing like Randy MC or whatever, you know, but in Swahili. So we picked stories that they could understand. So they could just hear some beats and something they understand. And that's how it started. Then later there's a producer called Madebe who later worked with Nyotandogo. He's like the first person who came to with a recording studio and started now recording. So he used to have like a dubbing machine to dub tapes, but he also recorded. So as he recorded, he called us in. So we used to like, we started now like rapping professionally on you know, like he could record us rapping. So that's how we upgraded. So then the culture now started spreading and many other people started doing now the rap. Yeah. Okay. So Buddha Blaze, um, just uh, take us into basically the hip hop of today and the urban music culture that we have right now, probably from the late nineties into today. So what are we looking at? Yeah. So, you know, music has really evolved. Like, you know, Fundi said, uh, you know, the, emergence of tapes coming into the country and people really looking at this as a, a culture that's very similar. You gotta understand that very similar uh, situations are going on in the big cities. New York, you have, you have uptown, you have, you have the, the slums, you have the ghettos. So a lot of this language resonated with the people here because like, oh, we also have slums and we have, we have uh, suburbs. So it resonated with the people here. People started seeing how you know, original hip hop was talking about their issues and how they can change their communities. And that's really what came here. In Nairobi, uh, some of the first uh, rappers was Hearthstone. You know, he was, you know, came out with songs where he would mix traditional music and, you know, mix it with English and a little bit of, of Jamaican toasting and of course raga and dancehall. And also that emerged into other groups such as Kalamashaka, who were really Kenya's biggest hip hop group at the time with the song Tough Siri He. At the time when Kenyan radio only played maybe American music. So now there was an emergence of talented Kenyan artists from the slums or from inner, inner communities or inner city communities where they call ghettos. And now they were talking about their hoods and they could put the message out on radio and people would be like, wow, I've never been to Dandora, but I'm getting a vivid picture of where they come from. So now messages started coming into the music and it's been flowing ever since, you know? 
And, and right now you've seen a lot of young people, uh, there was a time when there was more rappers than fans. You know, yeah. we would go to the shows and there was just like more, more, everybody wanted to be a rapper. It became yeah. like something. They, they could see the wow, if Hearthstone made it, if Kalamashaka made it, we also need to make it out the ghetto or wherever we're coming from. So it, it's really influenced pretty much the whole Kenya music business. Um, I mean, I remember when, Early 2000, there was not too many singers or whatever, yeah, young yeah, singers, yeah. but hip hop was really yeah. where you could now start seeing stars, you know, whether it's Darling P or yeah. whether it's uh, Giddy Giddy Maji Maji or K whether South. it was K yeah. South. All these guys were really uh, getting the energy of hip hop and saying, really, I have something to say and I really have a song to say and I have this style. And, and you could see how it really evolved into Kapuka and, and into. Um, what do you call it, uh, you know, uh, Ogopa DJs into Caliph, all this were influenced by hip hop because most of these people really wanted to be rappers because they were looking at MTV and Channel Low and they were like, wow, I want to be like that guy. How can I become like that guy? And up to now, you look at all the big artists, uh, mostly the hip hop artists or at least the people that are doing urban word, spoken word or, you know, putting words together in form of music, yeah. Yo, watch who I got to get. He beat me fat. Come on, blaze. I'm a come a sukuma week in a mayonnaise. I'm a come a lady abur on a victor. Walking your gari for moja. Hey, hey. Oh, no. But anyway, he need a walk. Hey, NYA. Now I live in a walk. California. Hey, karaoke. Hey, and angusha. Hey, K. See, I'm a little bit of 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 a little Wale MCs wote ambaye wanaroka Wache ni kutumia tu kabit moja This kabuka that Kabuka this Kabuka that Kabuka this Kabuka that Kabuka this Kabuka that Iyo watu wakati ke watu wakati Kabuka this Kabuka that Kabuka this Kabuka that Kabuka this Kabuka that Iyo watu wakati ke watu wakati Wakatika, kabuka, paka sangapika, kabuka, eh, paka teje me chumeka amp. I can't stand these old machantis. Me kusha fashion ni kama nyole za farm. Guru karuka ni kama menga rapams. Bantu ni shaje na ya camp ya kuwa camp. Kabuka, hili camp. Kibubuka kia wadi na madem wana matubu kandele. Leo li leo hiyo ni kwele na riba si sha hiyo le ni na kuwatele. Sele hili kama mili vani li wa wili wana rika tu kapiga tu makelele na kupi. Kibare for go fest Monday le, we we taza mambele. Minta fuga nyole ili kuchanuka. Kisha dita wapa kitusi kahi kapu 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 kades kapu kada kapu kades kapu kada kapu kades kapu kada. Yo watu wakati ke kapu kades kapu kada kapu kades kapu kada kapu kades kapu kada. Yo watu wakati ke watu wakati. Hi kwa kika, watakatika Mkunyo mavitu mingi mtatapika Simama na mkumoja kwa matakika Uniambie kama zime shika Na zime shika kama figa Ya kale kademcho ubaya ananika Na na mshika Jua na jua nikifika Hata jipa na dosa hizi ya na Mafikra jua na bamba Kunyamba kwenye kitanda Shiti zina kazi mikarangwa Harufu paka kwenye veranda Karamba na kata handa Sikwanza manga Labda ntala kuku zima sima Kabla kuku tuta chupa mzinga Wezi dishi kabla pika kanza Wezi dishi kabla pika kwanza Ya bamba kama samba Na unaganja kwa jampa Peya yeka vanta pana mwacha mwacha Vite chapa kama hicha kata Katia 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 Kama nzika kitigisha mandi ya ba This That Kabuka This Kabuka That Kabuka This Kabuka That Yo watu wakati ke watu wakati Kabuka This Kabuka That Kabuka This Kabuka That Kabuka This Kabuka That Yo watu wakati ke watu wakati ke Watu wakati ke Wakati ke Watu wakati ke
That was Jemedari performing Kapuka originally by KSL. Okay, so um, you've just spoken about um, the radio stations and, and the airplay. And when you read about hip hop in Kenya, some of the biggest um, gatekeepers of, of music to Kenyan radios were the DJs. And so were the Kenyan, were the local DJs um, perceptive towards local hip hop? Were they, were they ghetto? Were they opening the way for people to listen to this music? Yeah, I think, I mean, there was a time when, you know, really they, they, they wanted content because, you know, radio stations, what do they do? They have to play content, right? So I, there's a time when Kenyans were like, wow, we want to listen to our own things now. We want to listen to our own music because we know it's out there. Yeah. yeah. There's many groups. I mean, there was a time when D- Dandora was just a hip hop, you know, it was a hip hop city. Like there was so many rappers, like yeah. every door you went to, every young person rapped. So yeah. they knew there was talent out there. So they really started playing they had to music. look for it. Yeah. And also just to add to what he said, say is that uh, you see in the evolution of hip hop when we were doing our thing in Mombasa it started with recording in, in the club you know then it went to recording live you know on just the, the producer was just recording but it was, it was still raw it wasn't even played on radio much then now uh, what happened is when Kala Mashaka came out it's a uh, they worked with a producer called Ted Josiah. Ted Josiah was the biggest producer then. So now he had, they, we'd reached a level where he'd, he'd mastered, him and the other producers around that time, they'd mastered the sound that the, the stations need so that they can play them along the songs from abroad. Right. So what he did, now he brought Kalamashaka and, and Hardstone and them and gave them that quality that radio needed. So now they could play that quality. So there was a time even in the industry when the issue was quality, quality, quality. quality. They kept saying, oh, quality, you know, it's not sounding good. So they, even the producers now went to went back to the drawing board to find out what quality is this they're talking about. Is it mixing? Is it mastering? So they mastered it. So now it kept moving like that. Yeah, so now it reached a time when now hip-hop was now like the mainstream, quality they could yeah. play mainstream. Yeah. yeah. So you could, they could not have an excuse not to play hip-hop. Yeah, because it sounded the same as the rest in terms of, you know, quality. And as hip-hop grew, yeah. other offshoots of yeah. hip-hop started merging. Right. And people are, yeah. I can't necessarily rap like Fundy Frank, yeah. but I have something to say. Yeah. I might just get yeah. a beat and it was easy to make beats now. Yeah. Because now everybody had a, had a studio. I mean, the Ted Josiahs, those were the original people that actually went to school, studied the business. Yeah. They were indoctrinated in, in, into, into the church. They were gospel musicians. Churches had a lot of money at that time. They could either have a studio or a communications department or even just sound on stage. So a lot of these young guys were learning from church how to play music. And then they were like, wow, I can make a living out of this because young people want to make music and they, they were ready to pay for studio time. And that's how they started creating record labels you know, Audio Vault at the time, yeah. Blue Zebra, Blue Zebra. Uh, yeah. Summer Waiting, Summer Wati, Summer Summer Wati. Wati. Yeah. And, and so many other studios yeah. started merging. Jikoni in Mombasa. And, yeah, Jikoni well. in Mombasa. Yeah. And, and so many studios started merging up around the country and people were really taking this as a, as a profession. Yeah. But just something I want to add there. Uh, yes. So it, it, it took a run uh, before, I mean, Ted Josai, yes, very pivotal to, yeah. the, to, the, to the evolution, not only of hip-hop music, but of what you call urban music in Kenya, contemporary music, whatever you want to call it. Um, um, but even that click of Ted Josiah, you know, Bruce uh, Odiambu, uh, uh, you know, Guido Kibukosi at Samawati, that click uh, uh, had, there, there were a number of years where they were the only ones yeah. who yeah. were channeling out this music. Quality, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, because Trust of this quality yeah. thing. Yeah. It, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't immediately easy or, or cheap to actually set up a studio. And I think uh, someone was telling me that uh, the arrival of Fruity Loops, for example, yeah. software yeah. Yeah. is what yeah. really liberalized. Yeah. 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 So yeah. everyone could now become a producer. It's just right. software put in your, in your, in your laptop yeah. and yeah. you can actually make music from your bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually, I'm just describing Lucas. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Or that's yeah. how Lucas comes around. That's how Clay Moore of Calif Record comes around. So now you're talking about late 90s and they're coming to compete or challenge with the big guys. Ted Josiah, yeah, yeah. the big guys, there, right? Yes. And, and, and there's something that I think we'll touch on it later. But then this is not only uh, a sort of competition music, but then it becomes a real, a real uh, struggle between these, these kind of two camps. And I think it actually explodes much later. The name Kapuka, actually, um, uh, that funny enough became the name of this genre 
um, was, was actually a diss. Yeah, it was <laughs> a know? diss. Yeah, it was a diss. Wacheni it, kutumia it a, tu kabita exactly. moja, kabuka this, kabuka, kabuka that. that. Yeah. Which was yeah. really a diss. Yeah. Like, yo, you guys can't, you know, make better music instead of just yeah. using the same beat because there yeah. was monotonous, like, kabuka, kabuka, yeah. Yeah. every yeah. beat And, and, and that was the, the Fruity Loops, right? Yeah. So th- 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 that was the Fruity Loops made it sound in a certain way. Yeah. And kapuka really was an interpretation that producers were, were doing of dancehall music, raga, kapuka, this was the beat, right? So everyone could rap to that. It was very simple, you know, jinglish, right? Uh, uh, and to some others, it was even childish. Um, 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 but that was the staple that, you know, Khalif and, and Ogopa were putting out and people were loving it. The hardcore rappers were, hated it, yeah. but people loved it. But yeah. this is also a very important story, I think, in the evolution of, of hip-hop, hip-hop music in Kenya. I mean, there are also debates about uh, uh, were they even rappers? Was Isa, was, was, was Isa a rapper? For example, was them. I mean, was nameless a rapper? But this is coming from is coming from a debate. I think about form. How do you make rap music? Uh, uh, which is is being this this debate is being had in America, but also we have our own version here in Kenya where we had our little kind of debate around uh, uh, what what is the authentic hip hop sound? Right. You know. Yeah. Fantastic. So actually, that's what we're actually going to talk about next. So and um, just actually heading to Buddha, we were having this conversation right before we came here. Hip hop, kapuka, genge, and at the risk of upsetting people, genge tone. Is all that hip hop? And if not, what is it? Well, well, there's hip hop, which is you know that's the culture, which is you know you know break dancing, MCing, uh, DJing, right. and and fashion and, and everything else that in, in, you know comes with that culture. But then there's offshoots. You know, and you can't stop it. Once yeah, something's right. so yeah. big, it's like a yeah. it's like a balloon. If you if you put water in a balloon, one way or another, it's gonna split and it's gonna go different ways. So yeah, these there's gonna be offshoots, and it happens in every country. You you've seen even in uh, Nigeria now you have Afro pop, what they call it now, what they call it Afro beats. Yeah. Most of these artists, if you look to their past, were all trying to do hip hop. Hip hop, yeah. yeah. But exactly. because yeah. hip hop is competitive, you have to really maintain a certain level of of intellect and, and creativity to, to, to be a successful hip hop artist. People like Nas, Jay-Z have been through everything. They've been to war of words. They've been, to maintain hip hop was really very tough. So yes, there's gonna be offshoots. There's gonna be people that understand the music in a certain way or people that they want to say something but don't necessarily want to go toe to toe with Fundy Frank or they, want to, they don't want to battle, they just want to write. So we have people who are writing in studios and can write really well. So one of, one of the best artists at that moment was somebody like Issa, who's a great writer, a great communicator, really good diction, like he's, you know, he could really speak to the people. Right. So whether yeah. you want to claim whether he was hip hop or not, yeah. he was influenced by the culture, but he found a way of being able to pass the message to his peers and, and the people that were not necessarily it, listen, into listening to hardcore hip hop or listening to, or, you know, hip hop is one of those things, like not everybody will understand that there's these uh, rules and guidelines. Some people yeah. just like, I just want to listen to a good song. So he, w- some artists were just really good at passing the message. And because it was out there now, it was, it was a youth culture. Anybody could enter and anybody could come out and, and say- And also, yeah, also because of competition, and acceptable because what happened in the evolution of hip-hop when we had people like Ted Josiah these were people who were previous Ted was actually employed in a studio called Sync Sounds it wasn't yes. his studio yeah so but during the off time he they could create. put in the, the artists you know let's try these kids you know Samawati the same thing they even have Studio B up to now where they they'd record now their real stuff then the other stuff will be recorded later at night maybe at night when everybody's know? gone yeah and everybody's yeah. gone <laughs> You see, so now what happened was, is... Now, yeah. robbery was recorded at night. Exactly. Only at night. Only so at night. T- it took them like a year to do the album yeah. because they couldn't really record it. They couldn't the record. So that, is, that, uh, for, for those who don't know, it's a case out. Case, case out, out. Yeah. 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 So what happened is uh, once people like Ted now made it explode, now there was that competition. Then during those days, there was something in America that was also here called keeping it real. Keeping it real means yeah. staying to the basics of hip hop, you know. And there was underground. Then there was something called underground music and commercial music. Yes. So underground was the, that basic beat that we used a long time too. Yeah. You know, boring. It's just the a bit. Now some people started experimenting, making sweeter music, more club music, and that's where now people like Ogopa, Ogopa Lucas, Lucas used to. He actually worked at Samawati at some point. 
and even recorded a song with uh, Masi Maira. But he mm -hmm. was a DJ at, at Homeboys. Mm -hmm. But you know, he's a laid back guy. Yes. Me, a lot of people didn't know about it, that side of his. He used to play a lot of DJing. So when Ted Josiah and Kalamashaka were coming up, he was also seeing what people want at the club because at the club you could right. not play that hardcore hip hop. Yeah. So he could play the other, you know, music More that is danceable, playful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what now he took to Ogopa. So that's when they opened Ogopa. And then what happened also is that at that time when uh, Ogopa was coming up, Kalamashaka went to Tanzania to record with the P Funk Majani, the biggest like hip hop producer. So we went with them to Tanzania. And then uh, I left them there. They stayed for ac all, almost six months. Then what happened? Their computer crashed. You know, those days computers used to crash. You can't save like nowadays. So their computer crashed with a lot of music, with Kawesa of Uganda and a lot of people. So we made a lot of songs, but the computer crashed. So their music did not come out. So, so that there was face a void, of yeah. those avoid. And during that time, the other sound, the was other sound out. comes in now. You know, like Lucas came in now with Issa and Nameless, you know, danceable beats and danceable rhymes, yeah. you know. And then Kila Clemo came now, Khalif, you know, and they started because now Kalamasheka also had started going into and that political, yeah, music. Yeah, political music and, you know, the, yeah. what Blaze was talking about, you know, culture, the hoods and all that. But you see, even in the hoods, as much as there's poverty and all that, not every time people are sad. There's a oh, time they a need to time. party. Yes. And that's now where people like uh, Khalif and Ogopa came in. Yeah. Now Khalif started talking about, you know, now the general stuff, you know, the ladies, the dance, this. this. So people love that because now they're shifting, they were shifting away from the hustle. Because I remember Kama of Kalamashaka once saying like, you know, I think we've created a problem. When we started Tough City, he, every other rapper wants to talk about how things are hard in the hood, you know, and I'll make it. So every other rapper thought, like, this is the trend. If you talk about hardships, this is the trend. But you see, people also wanted other things. So that's how now the other offshoots came. You know, people are talking about, you know, fun, dance. Issa, for example, became popular because now he represented a huge youth that uh, maybe middle class and even the lower class that wanted to dance, that wanted to, you know, Have talking about, yeah. you know, Marashi, Nini, I'm looking good. That's what people wanted. And the beat by Ogopa was also friendly. So the beat could be played on radio. And at the same time, the lyrics were friendly. They're not very hardcore. You don't have to, when you're going to have a drink, you don't have to sit and listen too much. Meditate upon no. it, yeah. It's just, it's there. You can enjoy. You can yeah. either listen passively and you enjoy. Okay. Or you can, yeah, you don't have to really dig very deep into it. So it, it brought that element. And then now because of competition now, there was this. And that's why the Kapuka thing came because now, the people who were doing old, you know, that hardcore old school style felt these guys are now taking our cake. They're eating our cheese. Yeah. You know, they're getting more yeah. limelight. So now it brought that kind of beef. You know, yeah. these guys are not real rappers. They're not keeping it real and all that, you know. There was that time when the industry had that. Even in America, people used to diss each other. No, these guys are not real hardcore. They're not. And even, even in Tanzania, that's why we had someone like AY. He was called Mzewa Commercial. Because he now broke away from the hardcore beats of, you know, Professor G and the rest. And, and he started now singing more radio friendly, singing nice, you know. So, and people left him, you, you're singing commercial music. Yours is not hard hip hop. Yeah. So it was called yeah. Mzewa Commercial. Yeah. So he started doing that. So in the end, now people started now like mixing and all that. Right. And, you know, radio friendly. And it happens to date. There are people who still stick to that, you know, and, hardcore and, and, OG yeah, music. Yeah. Yeah. But there are people who make it more friendly yeah. and singy and, you know. But it's very serious. It's a very, if for true hip hop heads, this, yeah. this, to be accused of being commercial. Yeah. But I don't know how it is t these days, but yeah. back in the day, it was a very serious accusation. Yeah, back in the uh, day, it was uh, uh, People this, would die for it. <laughs> it was a very serious, the yeah. bitter, the day, it was right. crazy. It was very bitter, yeah. this kind it of, was, this kind yeah. of debate. It was very bitter. And, and also, really, it's about voice. For, for the kids from the slums, you know, Kei Shaka, really the representative of that in 95, 96, I think when the producer Tafsiri here, I think it was 97. Um, uh, the first verse, I think it was done by Kama, if I'm not wrong, yeah. where he says, uh, Oboho kauzi sasa tuko kwenye wira, right? And, and it's really what he's talking about. Oboho was the name of uh, of, uh, of, of, of yeah, Islam's cool kids. kids. Uptown kids used to call 
Eastlands kids Oboho, Maoboho. If I'm, I'm not from Nairobi, but they say yeah. Obes now. Yeah. Obes. Obes. Yeah. Now they say Obes. Oh, no, okay. Obes. <laughs> oh, that's, so, well, that's the origin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Origin. yeah. So, so, so <laughs> cool so, kids. So yeah. basically, what and this is the, the first Swahili song, uh, a rap Swahili song, and that's the first verse, and this is already there. This idea that oh, we we are we are now we are now on, on the steering wheel now, yeah. right? We are, we have arrived, and that was a very huge statement. Um, uh, which is why it, it becomes very bitter when these guys are taking over a thing that they thought they started, right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 without any, and, and without even getting any, any props uh, uh, for it. But by 2004, I think there's an artist at DNG, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, where he says, Situ na shida zetu tusikiza zako kwa nini. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I think yeah, yeah. this was really a very cheesy line. Yeah. But he was really yeah. responding to that. No, we just want to have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. Ruka ju. Yeah, by, Ruka, by yeah, Juka, yeah, yeah. I think that, and yeah, by the way, that, that song was yeah. really dissed in the industry. Yeah. Oh yeah. By a lot but of it's people. It's a bad song. song it's bad. Ever. Yes. Of yeah, but it was, became yeah. very big. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. it's also because of uh, you see when we were starting out hip hop, it was mostly about the love and trying out. There was no money. For example, after we started rapping, we used to go to a club called Toys. Now to perform during short time. That's when we started. We, we were now getting paid now to perform. Dance after, during the dance breaks, we'd now perform and they'd pay us. And the payment was 200 Kenya shilling. If there was, if there wasn't, it was tropical night on Wednesdays. If there was, if there was not 200, <laughs> it's tropical night. So they decorate the club with, with fruits. So that's what we eat. That's our pay. <laughs> so yeah. from then it came to now like Kalamashaka and Ted Josiah and now money started coming in. Now people like Kalamashaka started now making money concerts and all that. So up to now, until you had now like in a DNA. So there was that competition also for money and recognition, concerts. The concerts were not many. So if uh, organizers wanted rappers, they'd go for these guys. So now they'd be, ah, you know, now Gopa you is choice. more popular. Now you have a yeah, choice. You have yeah. a choice. People want to Gopa. Now you see now the other rappers would feel, wow, now these guys are eating our cake. Yeah. You know, so now that beef was very, really big. It's economical. Now it's economical. Yeah. Because now things were getting professional. We had stables now like Ogopa coming up, Kali, people are setting up and, you know, artists are realizing they can actually make money off music, you know, because yeah. they're now the Ogopa artists are already making money, you know, they're, and they're, they're flashy, they're flashy and they're showing and off, they're like, off well, and, they're, and they're living the, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. hoods and they're looking good. So now that beef escalated, but it helped to build the industry where people now are getting organized, you know, like it's more than just rapping. I mean, the, the Kapuka beef actually really, build the industry to what it is right now. It built Nyashinsky to a, an artist that he is right now because really yeah, it was yeah. essentially, it was dissing the whole Kapuka. Yeah. But the people who took the bait and went for it yeah. were, you know, kleptomaniacs who dissed yeah. back. Yeah, they did which was back, really yeah. a great time for the industry because yeah. you could see it. It wasn't like physical beef. It was yeah. more like no, entertainment beef, like lyrical beef. Yeah, I mean, there was those kind of incidences, yeah, but yeah, yeah. what was really good is like every Friday you would look up like, wow, what's going to be on the radio? Every, you know, it's not like now where it's quiet. At that time, you're like, who's going to say something? Who's going to say? Because they've dissed the whole genre. They've dissed the whole Kapuka. Who's going to be the first guy to diss back? And that really helped. And that in was uh, building. Trendele. Yeah. Trendele, yeah, Trendele. Yeah, yeah. Song. And you know, it, it brings back that element of being radio friendly versus being underground because yeah. Twendele was a diss Both. track. Was a diss track to uh, there's a there's a there's a rapper also. He was staying in South Sea called Wardes and his group. So they dissed they dissed uh, they dissed uh, they dissed Wardes? certain people. Yeah, it's called Wardes. They dissed a lot of people. You know, like they made those. It was these times of diss tracks in America, and he also diss tracks. So they made diss tracks. To this, you know, those people, klepto, what, and all that, the people who are popular. So now, uh, what, what Ogopa did, they did a diss track, but in a radio-friendly track. So you see, there has got more traction because yeah. it could be played. Yeah. It's professionally done, it's radio-friendly, <laughs> but the lyrics are tight. Yeah. So that there has now won because the other ones were okay, cool, and all, but, but they were hard tough, to beat. Yeah. You could not be playing on play radio it, yeah. so much. So that's now the difference. So now Gopa now, they understood. This is what radio needs. This is what can be played. And even video. The other ones didn't even do a video. The song just went and died because now Twendele picked and jumped. And also they were also in a good stable. Actually, we can see what helped uh, hip hop grow well is that the stables they were in, 
they were also they also had mixtures of other artists. For example, uh, Ogopa had now like Issa. They had Nameless. They had singers Lenny and all that. And later, you know, Klepto. And, you know, so they could push each other and they could sing each other's choruses and all that. And, you know, just being in that clique is also cool, you know. Yeah. So that, that, that mix just really helped them. But the danger with that is people got comfortable because now they're making money. They're like, okay, hip hop started fading. So you wouldn't have too much hip hop. So what me and some of my peers had to do is we had to sit down and, and, and say, cool, how are we going to reemerge the underground hip hop experience without yeah. necessarily being too hard, yeah. but necessarily bringing back the culture. So we, um, Mookie Garang, Mwafrika, we came together, we, we did this thing called WAPI, Words and Pictures at the British Council. This is now what created the new emergence of new artists. The, the, what you see now is Octopizzle, Calligraph. Now we brought back the sport, like, okay, cool, we've done, we've done the era of this is now let's bring back the culture in this new era of like, yes, there's money to be made. Yes, there's enough. Everybody can drive cars and everybody can have money. Now let's go back to the culture, to the roots. And we brought roots back at WAPI and all the artists that you see now that have emerged through this uh, platform. It was on Sundays, yeah? Yes, it was Saturdays. Yeah, it was Saturday a, afternoon. Yeah. Every yeah. first Saturday of the month the for six yeah. years. And this is what really changed yeah. and shaped the, the industry of what it is right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, you mentioned Gangeton, I and I was kind of thinking about that. I, uh, so for me, I, I've always said um, I'd been out of the country and I came back, and then there was this fact. The first name I heard was Ratchet Music. It wasn't even Gangeton. So there's this Ratchet Music going going around town, um, um, and, and the name Gangeton. I don't know where it came from. Maybe I don't know if from the artists themselves or journalists. I don't know. Um, but I think for me, when I listen to that music, it's it's really Claymore's Claymore's vision uh, coming to some fruition. Right, um, um, early back in the in the in the early two thousands, uh, within Caliph Records, Caliph Records really started by Gujua Kali and Clemo. Nonini is the first person we heard with the uh, Manzo Nairobi, but but really the the, the founders are Gujua Kali and and and, and Clemo. Clemo being the producer, Gujua Kali being the rapper. Now Gujua Kali was a hardcore rapper, uh, and, but Clemo did not want to put out that music uh, because Clemo wanted to compete with uh, with Lucas at Ogopa, music that can play in the radio and can have kind of mass popular appeal. So it's Nonini who broke that ice. Um, um, uh, shock, you know, the kind of things they were saying in the music, uh, 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 that audacity is, is, not, is not known to be very Kenyan, right? Um, um, but also what is also very Kenyan is, is this, we, we usually don't want our dirt in, out in the public. You know, casually Kenyans are like that. Um, um, but Genge or Gengeton is really a reflection of our society. But we don't want to see that ugliness. This is, this is my, my own personal view, but this is exactly what Nonini and Clemore were doing uh, 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 during, during that time, you know, 2003, 2004. Where come, you know, this, 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 this kind of songs. Um, so I, I, think, I think there's something there to be said about, about what Gengeton is doing. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, what I'd like to say about that is that if you compare, for example, back in the days when Ogopa was coming up and they had people like Issa coming up, you'd realize that the focus was on the lyrics, lyrical ability and content. Yes. So as much as the late Issa was rapping on uptown beats that made him popular, if you listen to him, he became big in the way you have Nas and Jay-Z. They don't just sing. They are very, very lyrical and poetic. So the focus is mostly on what they say. The, the producer would make their bit. They would work on making the poetry. So it sounds simple, but it's very poetic. And that's why they grow bigger. Now, the problem with the Genge Ton generation of now, they stopped having the focus being on the lyrics and being on being uh, audacious. <laughs> who can sing dirty more than the other one? Yes. So anyone thought, yes. you know, we can do it. I just go yes. to the studio and, you know, and yes. then YouTube, yes. you know, just sing, say, do this. Two people are mating. Yes. I'm bold. I can sing that. Then yes. all of a sudden they have YouTube views. Yes. Now, because we are, in, we, we are in, this, in, in the season where now you have things like YouTube, so whereby the person with the most views is the most popular. And you can't argue with that because now all the kids who think like them or anyone who thinks like them yes. would go and see someone say, have you seen that song? All of a sudden, they had many views. Now, yes. it's, that's what they are pegging it on. So it's more yeah. about views and yeah. being 
audacious. Yeah. But you see now, it's, it reaches a limit. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot it's of people out. have done it. Yeah, it's yes. time out. This guy has yeah. done it. Yeah. This other. So then people now come back and say, okay. And even the artists themselves. We did a song. We got three million views. Now they do another one. It doesn't get even maybe hundred thousand views. They're like, what happened? You know. But it's it's because of that. You know. If you follow even now like the American rappers, someone like Jay Z or Nas, they've always been consistent with their with their lyrics and beats. So even if they go play in a Latino beat, play in an Afro. Beat, they'll stick to that element of theirs of being, yeah, the, the content is very, very strong. If it's talking maybe about family or talking about your mother, you know, the way Tupac did, it's, it's, it's deep. It's deep. It's a whole, like, it's like writing a book from the beginning to the end. In the growth of our hip hop industry, uh, music, you'll find that once in a while when we were moving now from the hardcore beats to the radio friendly beats, we had some very, very, tough lyricists that were known back then. People like Kitu Sua from Dandora. He was very lyrical. His metaphors, up to today, people quote him. You know, but now it's reached a point where rappers could not, like, differentiate between being radio-friendly and being, uh, you know, like, real, poetic. So many of them do not have that talent of being radio-friendly and at the same time being poetic. Fantastic. So, guys, just to wrap up, because we could go on about this all the day. Um, in, in all your individual opinions, what is the health of hip hop in, in Kenya today? Is it sustainable? Do you feel it's sustainable? Do you feel like it's growing? Or is it something in the next 10, 20 years we'll be saying, you know, we had hip hop artists, there was a hip hop scene in Kenya? So, what do you think? Let's start with Buddha. You want to start with me? Yeah, great. I mean, we've seen the evolution. We've seen it grow. We've seen the roots. We've seen it come. It's had a foundation. If it was really up to me, I would take some of the artists that have really made it, you know, people like Kali and, and the others. I would say, cool, we've shown that there's money in this thing. We've shown that people can really come out and support us. Now, how about we go back to the roots and start experimenting. Let's go back to our forefathers music. Let's go back to, you know, get Fundikonda music and get like people like, you know, Dawoodi Kabaka. Why, why can't we remix their music? Because yes, we're doing a lot of these American beats and, you know, modern beats, but it's not connecting with the rest of the country or the rest of the world because we're missing out a very important part, which is continuation of culture. So I would say, like, how can we find producers that can go and do the Urutus and, and you know, Nyatitis and, and bring some of these instruments into fruition, into our hip hop? So that we're not necessarily just saying, hey, we can rap and we have this great urban culture, but, but look at how we blend our urban culture into our roots. And I think that's where there's a missing link. And, and I think that's the key to keeping our hip hop more, you know, continuous and, into the next generation, because then it's, it's about learning and keeping in touch with your history right. and your prison. Okay. Yeah. That's like Fundi? Uh, I think I agree mostly with uh, Blaze. Uh, like we've said, from where we started the hip hop to the journey to where it is, we've done a lot of experimenting, this and that, even, even in our industry in general. A few years back, we had like the, we had Kwaito. Then it came, it went. Then now a few years back, just recently, we had the Nigerian beat. Now it's on a piano. Now it's on a piano. <laughs> now it's the, you know, so there's a lot of experience. So all is catching up. Yeah, so than... hip hop, it's yeah. the same thing. People get uh, tired and they, they, they experiment and all that. But like Blaze said now, it's, 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 it's time that hip hop artists realize that now you need to blend. You know, you need to capture everyone. We are, we are at a time where there's money in music, but you can't make the money until you, you get a good audience everywhere. Your audience is not just the people you sit with in the hood that clap for you or your <laughs> yeah. mother, you know, yeah, tell you you can studio. sing. No, <laughs> you have the older generation. You have, you know, look at Afrobeats, for example. Mm. Uh, they've just won Grammys. They're doing big things and they're playing traditional music, mostly fused with modern music. Mm. And, if we get to that, someone can maintain their hip hop, you know? Hip hop artists can just maintain being hip hop artists. But how about the beat, the production? 
you know, have a nice production with a band, you know, the way there's, a, there's an artist called Awadi, there's, a, in Kenya, there's Jemedari, yeah. you know, trying now to fuse with, with the bands and bringing in the old elements and, you know, the band elements. So even the older generations see that this is serious music. Well, no, I think I'll just emphasize the same theme of, um, um, I guess we call it sampling um, and looking for inspiration from, from the past. Um, uh, Fela Kuti is a very good example, actually. In, you know, Fela Kuti also started trying to make music as Americans would make music in the 60s. But he was told, no, in fact, he was told this by his African-American girlfriend, to stop making music like American. Can you make music like an African? Um, and and he, went, he went back to traditional uh, uh, Nigerian music where he found the Afrobeat, what we now call the Afrobeat. You know, if you listen to a song called Egbemio, uh, I, I, think, I think it was done in 68, if I'm not wrong, uh, really there, because, because producers nowadays, younger producers always, when we, when, when we say these things, just with, you know, Buddha Blaze will probably know this, they just say, but where is this music? I mean, this debate started in 68. Yeah. 1968. Yeah. Well, people are already doing this in 1968. So, so I think, no, we have work to do ourselves as archivists, as historians, you know, as commentators. We, we, have work to, we have work to do to bring this kind of uh, sounds that, that, that we want to influence our, our contemporary music, right? Uh, Gengeton and Afrobeat, uh, are the, uh, is, 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 those are the dominant sounds now. Uh, later, later formulations of hip-hop, hip-hop being the mother. Um, um, but, but, you know, for the few rappers who are still out there, Octopizo, Calligraph, uh, 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 and, and a few others, they still they still need to do more uh, uh, in terms of bringing bringing a new staple, bringing a new sound. And I think one way of doing that, agreeing with Buddha Blaze and Funi Frank, is to go back to Benga, go back to Rumba. There's there's a lot of 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 material there. Okay, fantastic, gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking your time to come and expound on this particular topic. I think it's sensitive, just as you said, and with our other discussions, that at the end of the day, we always have to go back to our roots. Playing us out is Mr. Lenny and Habib, who is the late Issa's brother, performing Kamata originally by Issa and Mr. Lenny. My name is Alo Obala. Gopa Police Station presents Inspector Issa and Lenny. Ah, uh, tumekuja kuwa shika, tumekuja kuwa shika. Alo ya vipi madadi? Mama zi, hey, niko sexy, ala niko tayari, kuyenda tuwa kinasi. Mama beste niko poa, niko poa, niko freshi, niko freshi, niko tayari. Sexy, I love you, but I am. We end up talking.
nasi na mabeste mkopoa Mkopoa Mko freshi Mko freshi Mko tayari kuyenda chwa kinasi Everybody say ma ha Kamata ha Kamata ha Kamata Tende ha Kamata ha Kamata ha Kamata ha Kamata Hey through Shades of Benga continues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms for the next episodes. Shades of Benga, the book, is available in all leading bookstores in Kenya. Get your copy for this and other stories in full. Mambo Vipi, Mambo Vipi.